Hello, Moto America fans. It's time for another episode of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you may even learn something from this unlikely pair and their special guest. The mic is yours, Paul and Sean. Hello again, Moto America fans, and welcome to this very special edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. I am Bice on this side of the room, and Carruthers is way across the other side of the room. And in the middle, we have these fine ladies who are involved in the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. And we're going to let them introduce themselves, and then we'll ask them some questions as we go along. So, starting with you. I'm Alyssa Bridges. From? CJ. Wait, from? Uh, Southern California. Okay. Uh, CJ Lucas, also from Southern California. Kayla Tysler, Detroit, Michigan. Michaela Trumbull from Sheridan, Wyoming. Oh, oh. <laughs> Paul Carruthers, also from California. We got three California people here. Um, well, let, let's get started. It, it, whichever one of you guys want to kind of give us the, the scoop on. Just go the, from your side. You want, okay, then, then we'll we're going to start with you. We'll all tell the same stories. Yeah, I mean, you guys can pass it off. It's just, you know, talk about the Build Train race and tell, talk about how you got involved, really. I remember your video because you were, that's the one where you were sitting out in the driveway waiting for your bike to arrive, oh, yeah. there, right? Yeah. That was fantastic. I figured I'd have a little bit of fun with it. You know, <laughs> this is an incredible opportunity and to kind of poke fun at how excited I was for my bike to arrive. I had like a big welcome home sign and just like, okay, where is it? Um, but we all interviewed for it. There were like hundreds of women that applied for this. And one of the big questions was, do you have any race experience? So we all come from different backgrounds, you know. You've been a professional motocross racer and stuff, and you guys ride a bunch of sidecar monkey over here. Um, so it was kind of interesting that all of us came into this with no race experience, and then we get trained with Melissa Paris, and now here we are. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, CJ, so tell us, you, you guys all have a base. You ride motorcycles. You race. The rest of you haven't really raced. Um, you've raced. Okay. And CJ, you did motocross. It's it's obviously different, but there are skills with balance and things like that that help you. And you you won our first race at uh, Brandon International Raceway two weeks ago. So that that showed that there were some advantages. But we saw some development among the other riders as the weekend went on. I mean, it seemed like they were getting closer to you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us tell us about what you expect to happen this weekend at Pittsburgh. And, um, you know, do you, do you think you're going to have a little more of a battle, than, I guess, than you had? Really? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, that last weekend was a, a good, you know, get our feet wet and shake everything down, you know, and, and figure out where our comfort zones lie, right? And then being able to kind of push ourselves a little further. And I think all of us, I mean, by the end of that weekend, we were shaving seconds, right? And we were kind of coming into our own. And I think this next race will just advance more of that. And I think um, all of us are just going to get faster and kind of you know, be more comfortable on the track, not only by ourselves, with ourselves, but, you know, around each other too. So I think we'll definitely see a lot closer, you know, field overall. Yeah. I was, I was actually surprised. I thought, I, I don't want to say I thought it was going to be horrible, but I kind of thought it was going to be horrible. <laughs> but like, seriously though, but when I, I watched you guys that. go around the track, I mean, by the end of the thing, you look like you knew what you were doing. And I know that's based on very little experience. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool that you guys were able to pick it up so quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you find, for example, you don't have a lot of experience? No. And I'm, again, from Wyoming. So I have literally three months out of the year to maybe, that's pushing it, to mm -hmm. ride. So it's like, I have to wait all winter to even get on my bike and it's like, all right, now I gotta relearn how to get on this thing. Right, you're just figuring out where the yeah. controls are and stuff. Uh -huh. and you know you're racing. Yes. What what was the hardest part? Um trusting my bike to actually like lean over and actually getting my body off of my bike. I was very stiff and just kind of leaning my head over. And then I finally like got off where CJ was like, just loosen up. And even Melissa was like, what is going on? Because when I went out on um the racetrack last weekend, it I was on a bike for the first time ever I felt like and I was stiff and I did not trust me or the bike and then by the end I was shaving off a ton and then I get came in fifth and I was with I was right on Alyssa and Trisha's um tail end and I was super proud of myself because I beginning of that weekend I'm like what are you doing you can't do this I've right. already been on this but then it was like I finally remembered all the training and like how to actually trust the bike and trust myself. And then it was, it's probably just letting yourself relax. Mm -hmm. I know that's difficult. Mm -hmm. but... 
you basically killed everybody, right? <laughs> but I, and watching you ride, you I know I know you you've ridden motocross, but you're you're you don't have any experience in this because you look like you do. No, I mean if you call hooligan riding out in the back hills and stuff, uh, <laughs> training, <laughs> right? Uh, but no, it, I just. To, I took to it really well, you know, and I, I ride sport bikes on the street and that's the only discipline I've ever kind of ridden that type of style, you mm -hmm. know, so I think being able to let loose a little bit, being on a track, you're not, you know, dealing with drivers, laws, and everything else. Police. So I think being able to, to push that into what I've always wanted to do and then, you know, have it transition that well. Awesome. We probably, saw, you probably saw this at the first race, your, your lap times probably weren't gobs. Every time you went out off, but these girls, I'm sure, was huge mm -hmm. amounts of seconds. Is that what you found? I took 11 seconds off from wow. Tuesday on Thursday. That's to awesome. Yeah, that's a lot. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I went in Thursday not trusting the bike. I had just replaced. Um, I had magnesium wheels on the front, and I had I had dual calipers before, and I replaced it with a whole stock front end uh, because I was having some nasty speed wobble with the whole replacement front end. So I didn't trust the bike, and I didn't really have brakes. I found out on Friday during our that's why you get, that's why you gained eleven seconds. Yeah, and I, I just <laughs> exactly I didn't I didn't trust the bike at all, and um, thankfully we have some amazing mechanics that are helping us out this season, and they were able to help me put on a, a stock uh, master cylinder. So hmm. once I started trusting my bike more and getting the new brakes, I it made a world of difference. And now I got to come back from that deficit and try to. You know, get up to speed. Yeah, I mean, Literally. at least you'll have, it's, you'll go out here, okay, it's a new track and everything, but you won't have the same issues that you had exactly. before. You'll be able to build on that and just get going. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And kind of going off what Michaela said, like starting the weekend at Brainerd, like I felt very stiff and then I felt, I have felt way too big for the bike. Like I'm 5'11, so ergonomically, like the bike doesn't fit me as well. Mm. And Melissa and a few other riders I talked to, they were able to help me kind of do some more ergonomic bits and just to make sure I was kind of having my feet in the right place. I kept dragging my feet everywhere. I've done a pretty good job of letting him speak. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me talk about one aspect of this is the build part. And I mean, Melissa, you touched on it with you waiting in the driveway. The bike was coming. Literally, you had a bike arrive, but you had to build it. And I want to ask Kayla this question, uh, regard because you're an engineer from Detroit, so you've got that mindset. What is the build was the build part of it a cool part for you? And tell us about what the build was. I mean, you guys all kind of put your own thoughts and plans into this whole thing. And I don't even know how you would start to wrench on it, how that would even start. Yeah, I guess being an automotive engineer, people at home, I know also myself, I kind of expect myself to be like really good at it right away, but I've never built a race bike. Like I don't know what's better than one other parts. Um sure I'm I'm competent enough with the tools and I can do that part and I work tools every day at my job but I had never built a race bike before and I guess we all came in on the same page with that as none of us knew what we were doing when it came to building a race bike for road racing so I kind of channeled uh, I come from a, a vintage bike background so I raced vintage sidecar with a series called Arma and so I'm used to riding old kickstarting bikes two strokes in the 60s and 70s and stuff like that um, and I kind of channeled it with that, uh, working on those kind of bikes, but it's completely different. I mean, this is a modern bike and I don't know anything about tuning them for sure. So that was a big learning curve for me still. Mm -hmm. Michaela, you, I, I think I've got this right, that your husband got you involved mm -hmm. in riding. Mm -hmm. When you got back home, I, obviously he watched you race. Yeah. Was, he, was he there? Yes. Oh, he was there. Yep. I didn't get a chance to yep. meet him. So he's ridden. Did he give you any pointers? I mean, did you guys have kind of a, a no, debrief? No, he, he literally is like, I am so jealous of you right now. Like, this looks <laughs> so much fun, but at the same time, terrifying. <laughs> he, and then he was just asking me questions where he's like, okay, well, how did, how did you put your body on like this turn? And I saw CJ doing this. I think maybe you should try that. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Like, I'm, I'm down for trying anything and taking advice from anyone and just kind of filtering it in and out to see if it works, see if it doesn't work. Um, but more than not, he was definitely super jealous. And he's like, I'm terrified for when we go up the mountain back in Sheridan. He's like, I'm going to be hitting the top by the time you're already down at the bottom. <laughs> back down. 
That's fantastic. I love it. So you, you get to scoop your, your husband, who's the one who got you into this mm -hmm. to start with. So. Oh, yeah. He's my big hype man. You'll see us, like, right before races, literally. I'll have a headphone in. He'll have a headphone in. And we're jumping around, like, dancing. I'm like, <laughs> get the juniors out. Get the juniors out. I'm like, I cannot go on the racetrack without, like, seeing his face. Oh. And then after that, then I'm like, okay, I'm good. I got this. I got he's this. a break marker. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just have him stand in one place. <laughs> So let's go down through all four of you. Um, we talked about Build Train Race. We haven't really talked about train too much, but we know Melissa Paris was involved with you guys and going out at, you, I think you were at Blackhawk, was it? Or Grattan. Grattan. I get those two wrong. They're kind of near each other. So Build Train Race. I'm going to pick three, pick one of the three. What's your favorite part of that? <laughs> I kind of miss the build part now, uh -huh. like being like alone in my garage with my thoughts to figure it out. And like at the time, it seemed like the clock was ticking and there was a lot more pressure. But now I feel like I could do it quickly. And frankly, my bike had been having some issues and we were pulling basically everything off of it and switching it with Melissa's bike. So I feel like I rebuilt the whole thing quickly in between sessions. Um, so just that knowledge and um, we've got a couple of awesome mechanics. Kyle Dahl uh, is incredibly knowledgeable. Like he even like taught me how to adjust valves. Like just like while we're here, do you want to learn something? Like, yes, please. So that's been really interesting. And then to get out there and go fast on a bike that in the back of your head you're like, I built this in my garage. Really hope I did that right. But like it's doing it and like starting to trust it now. So it's kind of cool to have like the build come together with the final product. Yeah, and I want to also mention these are at Royal Enfield GT650, Continental GT650s. They're kind of parallel twins, a little bit of a throwback to the British era Triumphs. But these bikes have fuel injection, so they've got a lot of good parts on them. And these guys add some amazing stuff, incredible suspension. A lot of aftermarket companies have been involved in it. And that's the build part of it. You guys work with vendors and got some stuff going. CJ, build train race, which, which is your favorite? Very close, all three. Um, but yeah. I have to say the racing part. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> Weird. Uh, when you yeah. win, when wow, you win, that's it's odd. It's <laughs> winning makes a difference. <laughs> but but I, mean, yes. I, I would say the other. killing the other part. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, just racing in general, It's there's nothing else like it out right. there, whether it's, you know, road bikes or, or dirt bikes. And I think uh, in this particular program, being able to race something that we've built, and, and each race is we're still wrenching on our bikes, you know, we're still taking each practice as like a training, you know, we're trying to get better and trying to, uh, you know, advance our skill level to, you know, certain things. So I think all of that kind of filters in. So racing is just kind of taking all of that together and applying that. So it's, I like that piece of it. Kayla? Uh, I guess I would probably say the training and racing, they kind of go hand in hand. You can't race without having right, training. Right. But uh, racing is just such a huge mental game and a mental challenge. And that's kind of what motivates me is just how can I better myself at this? And I'm very self competitive. I won't really be competitive outwardly to other people, but uh, I'm constantly wanting to improve upon myself. And racing, I guess, gives me the most ability to do that. So this is interesting. I thought you being an engineer, I was going to say build. Absolutely. No question about it. But it's kind of a diversion for you, huh? It's it a little, is, little yeah. different. It is. Yeah. It's a little off of my lane, I guess. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I ride old bikes. They break down a lot. <laughs> I drive old cars. They break down a lot. So I'm used to like fixing things, working on things. But this just puts it in a whole different scope. Like I race a um, vintage sidecar and I'm a passenger for it. So... I'm used to my face scraping pavement at over 100 miles an hour, not my knee. Um, I tried a knee during our qualifying for the first time ever, and I was scared at first. Like I started to pick the bike back up, and I was like, wait, no, this is supposed to happen. Because in sidecar, if something scrapes, I'm not doing good. I'm right. going out too far, not too far enough kind of thing. But in this, it's like a whole different like mind game. Mm -hmm. Michaela? That is a really hard question. I feel like all of them, I look at them very differently. Um, the building, I got locked into my into my head, and it was like the perfect time to have this whole uh, program because I was going through a lot of stuff. Still, am going through a lot of stuff um, family wise, but so that was like a getaway. Um, but the racing has I don't know like the feeling that goes through my body like when we're at the start, I'm ter not terrified, but I'm like the nerves are hitting, I'm shaky, and then as soon as you take off, it's like. Everything disappears. Everything slows down. I can actually like hear myself thinking where it's not like 
this is coming into my brain, this is coming into my brain, because I think the world right now is just kind of all over the place and it gets a little overwhelming. So I would honestly say the racing aspect of it, um, being able to just like breathe and like you're with yourself on your bike, in your helmet, there's nobody there, nobody can talk to you at all. It's like you, your mind and your bike. And then it's just so cool to see everyone because it's like I've, I've, I've been with all of these girls since day one and seeing like when we first took the track versus when we try to take the track now, it's crazy. It's so crazy just to like see everything and yeah, being able to process all of that while you're racing is just cool. I, and I love it so much. <laughs> That's great. You had a crash. Did anybody else? My crash pretty bad. I got my airbag went off. Oh, you, you just collected I, rocks. <laughs> I just I collected rocks at Road America and um, in, in training. The fan lab? Um, no, oh. it was just was no. Just... We were just it was at training. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then at Brainerd, I hit my pipe on the on a on the ground and it chucked. I one hundred percent thought I was going over my yeah. head. Yeah, so you must have been nice. leaned over pretty well then. Yeah. You your bike well, bike. and I took a different. I was like, I'm going to take a line a little bit further out. Not going to do that one. Oh wow! Not that line at all. <laughs> but I like went into the grass, um, leaning over, and I have not a clue how I did not lay that thing down. I was like, hey, you're on a dirt bike with slicks. Remember that. But you're on a dirt bike now. Let's just take it nice and easy. Don't hit anything. Yeah. No yeah. crashes. Uh, no, I had you know, turn 13 was the bane of my existence. Knock on and it all, <laughs> yeah, knock on the hood. Yeah. Um, because I would, I had to set myself up for turn 12 different every time. And by the end, I got it. But the first few times setting myself up for turn 12 at Brainerd would make me take 13 really wide. So I had like two dirt bike experiences. And then the flat track skills kicked in. And then it was good, actually. You, uh, you said you crashed at Grattan. You must have been one of the first ones of the you women that had crashed. Scarlett and I seem to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. hey. um, yeah, we had, I had a really nice Brembo master cylinder and mono block, block caliper on the front that might be a little bit overkill for the weight and power of that bike. And it was like a light switch. Wow. And, you know, a little bit of that, like learning coming in, like to like feather the brake and stuff more. But um it happens yeah yeah but we got it dialed and it was a good learning experience of like maybe we should tone that back a little bit mm. so josh heron who is one of our our super bike champions he and you guys all know who he is he talks all the time about when he's on the start grid and if the kid's been racing since he was eight years old or something right he gets sick to his stomach on the start line he's that oh, yeah so you guys at the start line your first oh, yeah. race <laughs> what was that like any of you can respond i mean were you wanting to take your helmet off and heave or what what was going on there? i was shaking like <laughs> literally i wanted to just put both my feet on my bike and like i'm gonna drop this thing because i feel like my foot is just like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> like ah uh, can we go already like i want to get out of this <laughs> i think like, i hate uh, i hate the anticipation of like go do qualifying and then for four hours like yeah, what do you do right. with yourself so i like walked all through the pits like went and saw a sat over with melissa who was working on 100 on them stuff and it's kind of like, I don't need to be in your way, but I just don't want to like be in my head. And then I think my eyes turned red as soon as the light wasn't red. And then it got super in my head. Just like, oh, let's go. <laughs> but the anticipation kills me more than being on the grid. Like being there, I'm like, let's just go, oh, come on. Were, were any of you wanting to, okay, I got to get the lightning fast start or you just want to start and not uh, like pop the clutch and wheelie or Richard something crazy? Richard's start was red. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you should see, there's a picture floating around somewhere. This Love one. Fun. Like oh, straight up and down. There's a lot of torque in the room. <laughs> I did not expect my first Pulled time I got to <laughs> yeah, it was just it was and awesome. I'm starting after her, so I'm like, I'm just gonna do yeah, <laughs> <don't know>. it. <laughs> it was it was, it was, it was our <laughs> first track day in Grattan. We were doing practice starts and we were in two waves, so we were in two lines and off the front, I just dumped it like I would on a flat track bike. And I, I hit like a eleven o'clock wheelie and I landed it. <laughs> It was, it, was it, was, yeah. it was a good one. The worst part was seeing you go up like this and seeing Melissa over there, like, full, like, I'm like, oh, when that's Coach doing that, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Her and Josh Hayes complimenting after, and I thought it was, like, you know, one of the best badge compliments of honor. ever. Oh, oh yeah, it was good. a badge of honor. To, oh, There's something to be said, actually. I mean, I'm not going to tell you guys to do this, but once you do have your first crash, 
like like the track, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, it's not that bad. Well, it's not that bad. Yeah. You say it's not yeah. that bad, right? And it's it kind of makes you almost settle in a little bit to know that you can do it. Yep. And it's not the end of the world. Yep. Yeah. yeah it, very totally. stoked for Arai supporting us. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. Well, you had like a scrape all the way up to the front. Yeah, didn't you? I felt so bad. It was like, hey, here's your brand new helmet, and then like, like brand new. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, you know, that's something I wanted to ask you guys because, you know, today there's a little bit of rain out there. It's going to go away for the fans that are going to be coming later. But I saw your bikes out there and this is the part of racing that makes me a little crazy. I, I say I think I love the build part of it the most. I, I love everything about the art and the mechanical beauty of a motorcycle and riding. It's cool, too. Racing's awesome. I love it. It's fantastic. But I don't want them to get wet. I don't want to ever crash it. I don't want to wreck my bike that I worked so hard to build. Do you guys not feel that way or is it an appliance? That's why you got to ride somebody else's bike. Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, do you feel that way? Because it's kind of your bike, but you know, you kind of, it was kind of given to you, right? So you maybe are okay about crashing or maybe not? What? I, no. I would say no. Yeah. We all no. named our bikes, which is a problem. Oh, well, what do you think? What's, what's your bike's name? I'm not supposed to name them because Uber's it helps probably. you get too attached to them, but mine is Max. Okay, CJ? <laughs> no. Yeah, CJ, oh, what's your is it, is it ready for prime time? I mean, uh, Karen. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. But when it's acting up, it's Karen. When it's <laughs> behaving, what's it? So saying? like my build process, she was she was a Karen. Like we just it was all business. I couldn't have fun. It was like I need to speak to the manager every day. And I'm like, can I just build this? Can we just get through this together? I'm like, oh, and then the day it got picked up, I was like bloody knuckled and just sweating, barely got it done within the hour. And then I was like, Karen, let's go. It's perfect. <laughs> Catch down the flip. Perfect. Kayla, what? Uh, mine is Johnny Cash. Because oh. I got mine one piece at a time. Uh, based on Johnny Cash song. It cost me way more than a dime, though. Uh, <laughs> But nothing on my bike matches. Everything, if you look at my wheels, one in the front one is spoked and the back one is like cast. Oh, wow. So they're different. Like one that. is chrome, one is black. Uh, I have one black, like my brake lever is black. Um, and then my clutch lever is silver and just nothing on my back, my bike matches. And it looks like I got it one piece at a time. I did. <laughs> so it's Johnny Cash. We mine is Bolt. I've the, I've got the big lightning bolt right. on mine, so okay. going with bolt. You gotta ask her why she has the bolt though. Oh man, you're gonna make me cry though. I was looking if you had a lightning <laughs> bolt somewhere. I got lightning bolts on my shoes. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. I just have my. I'll try to do this very quickly and okay. hold my crap together. <laughs> um, my dad is fighting brain cancer right mm -hmm. now, and so. Just a storm is it can be so dangerous, but it's so beautiful at the same time. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and lightning has a lot of power. And I feel like I need a lot of power. Yeah. Well, listen, it's a credit to you to do this. I mean, we we knew this story and I was thinking, I don't know, I gotta bring this up somehow. And I didn't well, I'll talk it. about but it. It's just yeah. you gotta yeah. <laughs> and she just did she just did win the uh, fan favorite. So for every month of July, people could vote for it. So yeah. she won. So. Oh. It's a pretty killer story to be like, you know what? She's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a I'd send him I send him videos daily. Um he just got moved into hospice. So I was with him last weekend. Um and that's like all like it's either me, my bike, or my dog, honestly. Um, as soon as he, he sleeps a lot right now, and so as soon as he wakes up, it's like, how's your bike? Oh. Or where's, where's Coda? I'm like, well, Coda's laying right next to you, and my bike is good. I'm taking off for, for the training, or not training, but the race uh, this weekend. And so he looks forward to, he can't really stay awake for the whole entire race, but it's nice that it stays on, and I gave them the whole like password to get in so they can watch it whenever. Um, but he sits there. And whenever we're at like rev limiters, our bikes literally are like, bah, 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 and he thinks it's a turbo. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I max so it out cute. and I'm at my rev limiter, he's like, oh, turbo's came in. <laughs> oh. So I'm like, every time I hit my rev limiter, I'm sitting in my helmet just laughing because I just think of him saying that I'm hitting my turbo. And I love it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Is he a rider? He was, yeah. Oh, so he completely understands the whole thing. Yep. Man. That's great. Yep. Wow. And so on my suit, I have, on my throttle hand, I have dad. On my suit, so he oh. gives me he gives me the power, and then mm -hmm. I have a dragonfly for my mom on the other side, and she's gives me the oh shit clutch. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, little fun fact for you guys. Uh, Garrett Gerloff races in World Superbike, you know, formerly in Moto America. He used, when he was in Supersport, I think he stopped doing this, but he had a bike that he named too. And it's, I can't remember the name, but it was, it was some kind of a candy. It was like, not peppermint, but it was some kind of a name like that. And he said, and that was the name he had for the bike that year. And he did really well with it. So it's not uncommon to name your motorcycle. It is sort of a, a part of who you are. It and hurts your more soul. when they hit, though. Yeah, <laughs> no, it does. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. They, they I mean, have yes. souls. I mean, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. So um, real quick, Kayla, I want to ask you, since you've done sidecar and you're a monkey, okay, mm -hmm. but you're a tall monkey. I am, yes. Yeah, so you understand about weight balance and all that kind of stuff. Completely different on a motorcycle yeah. that you're leaning, because the sidecar doesn't really lean, does it? No. It, <laughs> yeah, the only way to lean is by... Yourself. Yeah, I'm I'm the one steering it. Yeah. Um, just, people don't really realize the sidecar. I know at Road America, we actually got to take a few of the girls for a ride in the, the sidecar racing rig. So it was really cool to see, because... Even going 10 miles an hour in the pits, your body and gravity naturally want you to lean out or mm -hmm. lean over the rider. Uh, yeah, it was, I find myself still taking sidecar lines. Like, because you've got to take way wider lines on the sidecar that cut deeper. And I still find myself trying to take those lines, even though I'm a passenger at Brainerd, I kept doing it a few times. Mm. So I, I got to break that bad habit. Well, it's a whole different thing. It's almost like it's not even the same sport a little bit. It's it almost like a car, really, mm -hmm. than anything. So, yeah. Um, but that's a fascinating thing, especially in Arma. Do you ever race the, the two-stroke sidecars? Um, I personally do not. Yeah, those are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I race uh, an SC1, so a four-speed 650 from the 60s. And then I also race a Formula 2 sidecar. So wow. One of those bikes goes on like 160-plus miles an hour, and one goes like 90. Wow. So, yeah, two very different things and a whole different workout and a whole different mind game this bike is. That's great. Well, listen, we're going to wrap up. Really great to have you guys on. I mean, there are three more of you that we'll try to get them on as well later on, but it's great to get to know you. I'm really happy that you guys are doing this. I think we all are. And the fact that you're all pretty different individuals, it's kind of cool that it's a, a real conglomeration, a melting pot of what, what this whole sport is about. Um, and, and, you know, thanks for being on, Paul and I are really, really happy to have you. So, and good luck this weekend at this track. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.